Hello everybody, in this episode I want to do a little bit of a follow-up from the last video I made connecting multiple Raspberry Pi clients to a Raspberry Pi server via Socket.io. I just wanted to uh, revisit the code, uh, clean up the logging a little bit and make it a little bit more um, easy to read the output when you have multiple clients connecting to a single server. And so to set the stage for this, let me show you uh, what what I mean and what and what we're going to accomplish. So, if you remember from last time, uh, I showed you how to fix an issue with Python 2.7. I just want to uh, clarify, and I put this in the description of the last video. I reached out to the project maintainer, and they have no intention of fixing that in Python 2. <clears throat> he said he hasn't been working on Python 2 for quite a while and doesn't want to go and support that anymore. And so, I would recommend you run this always in Python 3. Uh, the Python socket IO library as 2.7 support is apparently now being deprecated. So uh, just a heads up on that. So but what we're going to do is we're going to launch this my server. This is all the same code as last time. I haven't changed anything. And you're going to see that you get this uh, WSGI starting up. And then what we're going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, it's I'm going to run all the clients in Python 3. The server still runs in Python 2.7. The clients don't run in Python 2.7 unless you do that hack fix that I showed you in the last video. So we'll just run them with Python 3. So I'm going to run client 1. And you'll see the connection is established. But if we come back to the window that shows our server, it's really noisy. Like you can see the data. Like here's the connection being accepted. Um, and you've got a lot of logging. It's really hard to read the output and the, the temperature readings in here every five seconds. And so let's see how we can clean that up first of all. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel the client and come back over and kill the server. This is super easy to fix. That logging is actually coming from the eventlet WSGI server and we can suppress that really easily by just coming down here and saying log output equals false. And that should clean up all of that logging. So if we run the server again now, you'll see we don't get anything. We don't even know that the server is up and running. So you might want to put like a print statement in here to let you know that it's doing something. Uh, but then we'll come over here and we'll launch the client again. It's going to connect. And if we come back over to the server output, much cleaner now. We're not getting any of that extra logging, uh, which you may be interested in, but you know, for the purpose of a demo, it's nice to have it nice and clean like this. You can see we get the connect and it assigns it a session ID, and then we're just getting the data from the nodes. <clears throat> okay, so one other thing I want to show in this short video today, uh, I'll try to keep it a little shorter, is what can we do with this session ID? And actually the Python socket IO uh, package has some cool session stuff built into it. And so let me show you that. So I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna cancel our client again. And we'll come back to the server. You also see that you get a disconnect here as well. It's a lot easier to see when the output's cleaned up. We've got the, the disconnect and then the session ID. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so this session ID is something that you can use to identify a node, but it's assigned by the Python socket IO library. So what could we do to identify clients a little more um, explicitly, give it a name? You know, we, we might have a, a Raspberry Pi client in the garden, one in the garage and one in the living room. And you want to not have these long GUID identifiers. You want to have, you know, something that's a little bit more human readable. And so let me show you, there, there's a lot of ways that you could accomplish this, but let me show you a, a real simple one. Um, whenever we connect to the server, and again, this is how we do that. I'm in client one, we just, we connect. And just a reminder again, you wouldn't use local host here, you would use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi server. But what we can do is we can actually just pass headers on the request. And uh, let me just put something on here like device ID, and we'll call this client one. So in the connect, we're gonna pass a special HTTP header that is our device ID 
and client one. That's our identifier. We can name that whatever we want. It doesn't have to be client one. I'm just using client one because that's what the name of the file is. And to see that over here on our server, we have our uh, connect, which is fired every time a new uh, client connects. And you can see that it takes two arguments, a session ID and this environ um, variable, which is really just the environment that was used to capture that connection. And we can print that out. And so let's do that. We'll print out environment just to show you what it looks like. And so let's go ahead and start our server back up. And we'll come back over here and we'll start client one. It's going to connect. We come back over here. You can see we get this big splat of data and I'm actually going to go ahead and kill the client so it doesn't just keep logging data there. We'll come back over here and we'll kill this as well. And so you can see all of this is about the HTTP request. It's saying it, it was using the get method. Um, here's the path information, HTTP protocol, query string, and all this stuff that's happening under the covers that you don't see in these short little lines of code that the Python socket IO library is handling for you. But if we look carefully at this, we'll see we have this headers raw, which is a tuple of tuples. And in here, you'll see we now have this device ID client one. So we could either grab it out of this headers raw or you'll also notice it created this special HTTP underscore and then capitalized version of our header. So HTTP underscore device ID. This was not here before and you can see the value is client one. This is right on the raw environ variable. And so we could either grab it out of headers raw or we could grab it right from here. And an example of doing that is let's just write a little function to say get device ID and we'll pass it the environ. And what we'll do is we'll just return that and we'll do a get HTTP device ID. And if there is none, if we didn't pass it, we'll just return none. And so as the default. And then what we can do down here in our connect is we can say device ID equals get device ID and just pass it the environ that we get on that connect event. And now it's going to return none if they didn't pass one. So just for a backup, we can say or the SID. So if, if they don't pass it in the header, we'll just use the session ID. And then we can clean up this message a little bit and say, uh, we'll, we'll switch it. We'll say the device is connected. And then instead of the SID here, we'll pass in device ID. Okay, so now when we get a connection event, we will pull it out from the header and we should see that. So let's come back down here, start our server back up and then start our client up and see what it looks like. So it's connected. Now over here, oh, I didn't do the format right. Stand by. This is why you have somebody looking over your shoulder when you're coding. Okay, we have to do uh, dot .format <clears throat> using the syntax that I was using there. Okay, like that. Let's try this one more time. Okay, now over here you'll see client one is connected. But now we're still seeing this receive data from node and we're just splatting the session ID again. So this long session ID is really client one. So when we launch multiple clients and we're just seeing receive data from node, we're just seeing these long GUIDs and it's hard to see like whose temperature am I getting? And so um, let's go ahead and cancel the server and the client. And let's see how we can use the idea of sessions in socket IO, uh, Python socket IO to help us out with this. And so what we can do is there's a, there's a built-in helper function. So right after we get the device ID in the connect function, we can do um, something like this. We can do sio.save session is what the function is called. We give it the 
session ID, and then we can save arbitrary information here that we want. And so what we can do is we could just say device ID and pass our device ID that we just grabbed. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna save the session in our SIO instance that we create right here at the top and it's running and listening for messages. We'll save a session with a device ID on it. And then what makes that useful is down here when we receive a message, we can just do session equals SIO.getSession and just pass it the SID. And so what that's going to do is fetch that session object back out for us based on the uh, session ID. So it's just going to look it up. And now we can say receive data from, instead of node, we'll just say receive data from the name of the, the client device and then the data. And instead of passing SID, we will do session and pull the device ID back out that we just stored up above. So we'll save that. Hopefully I don't have any syntax errors. We'll run my server. Okay, so far so good. And then now let's run client one and let's come back and look at the server output. So now you can see client one is connected and now it's gonna say receive data from client one. And so now we can open up client two. We'll just copy the headers from client one come into client two and just no other changes are necessary. All we have to do is add that header information and we'll say this is client two. We'll save that and we'll just launch Python three client two dot pi and it's gonna establish and then we'll go back and look at our server. So now you can see client two is connected and now you're seeing receiving data from client one, client two, and it makes it a lot easier to read and uh, using that session like that. And then just to show how the backup works, um, again, this in the server where we said, if we don't get a device ID, just use the session ID. Let's uh, launch one more of these windows and we will launch client three without any changes. So it's not gonna pass that header it will still connect just fine. So we've maintained backward compatibility here. And now you'll just see that we use the session ID instead. So it's going to say that session ID is connected and you'll see the, you know, it's temperature, but the other ones that are passing the header are nice and clean, passing that information in. And so that's a, a way again, to clean up the logging output, makes it a little bit easier to follow. And then also using this idea of sessions on the Python socket IO library so that you can more easily track which clients are which, uh, to separate the data and then do interesting Internet of Things stuff with it. So hopefully you found that helpful. I'm going to put all of this in a gist and put the link for that in the description down below. So if you want to grab this code, uh, again, it's just starter code to, to get your project started. Uh, let me know if anything's not clear or if you'd like to see anything else. I love to put these videos together to help people get started. And so thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.